Welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? Rory, I'm going to talk about creating properties. In fact, we're calling this P for properties. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go slightly off rails a little bit and, and, and show you some property related features. But this is about how to create and declare properties working with properties. So that's what we're going to do. Now, okay. I've, got a, I've got a class called person here and I want to add some properties to it. For example, I might want to add a property called uh, first name. So to do that, I will l just enter the letter P, P for properties, and then followed by a shortcut for the type of the property I want to create. So for example, here I want to create a property of type string uh, that'll hold the name of the person. So I'll just type in PS, then I'll hit my template expansion key, either the space bar or the tab key depending on the settings that you specified inside of the Code Rush setup wizard. Yep. And after that, it gives me this expansion. And notice the backing store is there for me. Everything's got a, kind of a, a name that doesn't really make sense for me, property name. And I want to call this first name. So I'm just going to type in first name. Now, the exciting thing about this code template, which is similar to a Visual Studio uh, code snippet, uh, uh, you can think of it as a code snippet on steroids, is yep. that it automatically renames the backing field using the naming conventions that I specified in the options dialog, uh, no matter what I type yeah. here. So go ahead, Rory. So I was just saying, in your case, you've got a, a lowercase initial letter on your field. Uh, there's no prefix of any kind, but I know other people have done things like underscores or, or capital letters, Pascal casing, that kind of thing. All those options are covered under the hood. Uh, but this is just churn things out exactly the way you set them up. Right. Let's do it one more time so you can see how fast and easy this is. I'm going to sure. hit the letter P for property, S for string, and this time we're going to type in last name, like that. And mm -hmm. so all I've done is I've hit PS, property, string. Then I've hit the expansion key, which is a space or the tab key. And now I'm going to hit enter. So, so for the most part, I'm just... The, the the command keys that I'm hitting, especially the P and the S, that's the work. That's the bulk of the effort that you have to do. The tab key or the space bar, whichever you use to expand, those are big fat keys, easy to hit. And so is this enter key that I'm about to press. When I press this enter key, because I've got an orange box around here, that means I'm in a, in a text field. And so when I hit enter on that, it's going to take uh, the caret and put it right over there. Oh, yeah, see that do. little marker there that's showing where it's going to go in advance. Exactly. So I'm just going to hit enter, and now I'm right down there at the end of that declaration. So the very longest part of that exercise was choosing and typing the name. Right, exactly. Which is which is the part which is really what Code Rush is about. If you are spending a significant amount of time typing anything other than the names of variables when you're coding, um, there are probably Code Rush features that can help you write that code faster. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason. That's one of the reasons why Rory and I are doing these feature of the week. Absolutely. Yeah. Sessions. So now that I've done that, I, w I want to show you something else. Now, this is a bit of a contrived example. So, uh, you know, uh, alert that we're going into contrived <laughs> territory now. But sure. let's say that the um, that setting uh, this, in fact, actually, maybe let's let's come up with something a little less contrived. Let's say that we had a property that connected this to a particular uh, database. And so we'll uh -huh. type in AS here and we'll say uh, uh, connection uh, DB. And let's imagine that that connection out there takes some time. Oh, and by the way, I, I feel like I have to roll back time a bit. Did you see what I did? I you typed snuck in, something in there, didn't you? <laughs> I typed in AS instead of PS. So PS is for a, a read-write property with backing store. AS is for an auto-implemented property and of type string. And so a, that's what I typed in, and it gave me this, and then I just typed in the name. So um, now that I've done that, let's go ahead and we'll say, okay, let's see, here's where we were on this. In fact, maybe I will, let's comment this line out for a second and let's just do it the regular way. So we're just sticking with the letter P for property. PS like that, we paste in the connection DB. Uh -huh. Down here in the center, let's say that I wanted to protect against extra delays when the connection DB string that comes in is the same as what it already was. In other sure. words, let's say there's some sort of time-consuming, uh, uh, time-sucking side effect here. 
or even CPU sucking. It could be any kind of resource that you consider um, that needs protective, that is precious to you. Exactly. So let's let's we'll we'll go ahead and update that. Some sort of resource <laughs> resource CPU sucking uh, uh, bad thing is happening here, right in that code right down there, and that's what's happening here. And we want to protect against execution going there if we're we're simply just reassigning the same value to the connection db string right we don't want to have that we don't want to incur that so you can um, place the caret here at the beginning of the set method and choose introduce setter guard clause so um, this menu came, comes up when i hit the code rush key uh, and it also comes up when you bring when you hit the action menu key in visual studio so in visual studio it's control plus the period uh, you can use that. Um, I've rebounded it to the num0 key. Uh, that's also one of the options uh, that you can do in the setup wizard. Here's the option in the code rush setup wizard right here, where I can hit the num0 key to bring up the code refactor menu, also known as the action menu here in Visual Studio 2017. So I'm going to put the caret here and I'm going to choose introduce setter guard clause. You can see what that's going to happen in the preview hint. It's just, it's just going to come in here, check to see if the value is the same, and if so, return. It's a very fast way to get that line of code inside of there very, very quickly. Like Absolutely, that. but of course, it's you know there's a couple of um, symbolic uh, keys in there. You've got braces, you've got the equals key, some shifting, some semicolon. It, it's a tiny little thing, but to not to have to think about that is quite valuable. Just boom, it's in there. Right, that's the goal, right? And if there are, by the way, if there are things that you find yourself doing again and again, let us know because we want to make that faster and easier. So, all right, so that's introduced setter guard clause right there. And and that is very, very useful. In fact, I'm going to, I delete it, but I'm going to leave it there just so that you can see it and remember that. I'm going to take these two pieces out. And we talked about that AS using the A. So we can use the letter A for properties as well. And I'll just do that very quickly. So we'll do, again, AS. We're going to create first name right here. And by the way, something, watch what I'm, let me do that again and watch what I do here. <laughs> AS again. Now it's calling it property name. I actually want to keep the, the letters N-A-M-E at the end in my new property name. I just want to get rid of the word property. So yep. I'm just going to hit the left arrow key to get rid of the selection. Then Alt Shift right arrow to select just the camel case portion of it. So Alt and Shift and left and right arrows will help you, will allow you to select just the camel case portions of it. And you can, uh, uh, if there were several uh, camel case words together like this, you can select several like this just by using. I really like this feature, Mark. Yes. I really like this. It's nice and, and, and easy to remember as well because shifted arrow keys, shifted navigation will obviously create you your selection. But we just have throwing that extra keystroke in for the extra level of control, right. the leaping over the extra, you know, the word, the word boundaries, if you like. Exactly. So alt, left and right arrow moves and combined with the shift key and it selects. So mm -hmm. all I did, we'll just do this again in slow motion, AS, then I hit the space bar, left arrow, alt, shift, right arrow. And now I'm going to just type in last like that. Then I'm going to hit enter and I'm out very fast. Yeah. Another thing I can do, let's say I wanted to add middle name here. I'm going off rails, Rory. Uh, yeah. we, we can do a shift enter for duplicate <laughs> line and look what Love it does. Duplicate line. And it, I can just do that. It, it sees what I'm changing between the lines above and it now selects that portion, gives it to me as a text field. I just type that in and hit enter. I'm out. Right. So there was no prep for that at all. That, that was just Code Rush looking at your previous examples and going, do you know what? I think Mark's going to want to do this. Exactly. That's why yeah. I go off rails frequently, Rory, because it's so easy to go off rails and say, it really is. take a look at this other feature. So real quickly, because I don't want this to go too long. So AS, auto-implemented property of type string. Okay, let's say we want to have years old. AI would be that. Let me show it to you in slow motion. A for auto-implemented property. I for integer. So AI, and then we just type in uh, years old li like that. Okay. And let me yeah. copy that to the clipboard right there because I want to do that one more time. And I want to show you a few other property options on this. You can okay. also do read only properties. So read only property is an R followed by the letter I for integer would give me, allow me to do a years old read only property very quickly like that. And a write only property is the W. Those are extremely rare, but yeah. we've got templates for them. What's cool about using the A, the R, the P, and the um, and the W 
is that they it's all following the same rules. The first letter in the code rush templates are most often they essentially are what's the thing I want to build? Is it M for method? Is it V for variable? Is it P for property? Right. Yeah. The second letter or combination of letters is the shortcut. And I, I and I promised in an earlier video, I think M for methods, that I would get into that. And then we got so excited and I think we went <laughs> off rails in that one. We forgot to actually show people where is the list of all of these. And there are a couple places for them. Um, one of them is uh, is is in this template name variables section in here. So it's editor all languages template name variables. And um, you might see a different language here other than neutral. You might see C sharp or VB, but you really want to go into neutral to find these and into neutral. And the reason why is because these types that we have these shortcuts for are um, are common to all .NET languages. In other words, a uh -huh. system dot boolean is the same type regardless of whether you're working in an F sharp, VB, C sharp, etc. Right. So these dot net types yep. are all out here. These are the shortcuts that are there. So you can see B is a boolean, C is a char, D is a double. Y you can for many of these, you can use the rule of, well, what's the thing I want? I want a data row. So um, let's try just going up with the initials of the uppercase letters and you'll get it. Data row view, you can see that too. So most of these are totally intuitive. One of these that I use a lot, date time, it's D8 like that. So that's kind of a phonetic one. So D yeah. followed by an eight is like a date. That's an easy to remember one as well. These are here and these work with all of the templates that create members that we've been showing you. So everything for properties that's and uh, methods and variables. OK, yes. So now last thing I want to show you is I want to come in here uh, and I want to show you one other cool thing that you can do. Let's say you're implementing an interface that has properties like, for example, this I, right here. I've got iHuman. We've got some properties in it and uh, I'm just going to hit uh, bring up the action menu here and I'm going to choose implement interface. So what happens is Visual Studio gives you this helper right here. But it's kind of not entirely a great helper because most often you want to change this and you want yeah. to change it into one of two things. You want to either change it into an auto implemented property or you want to change it. You're, you're likely to want to change it into a, a property with a backing field with backing store. Sure. You, you can do that with Code Rush. Just hit the Code Rush key here and choose convert to auto implemented property like that or hit the Code Rush key and choose convert to property with backing field. You can do either one and it Very makes nice. that change for you um, just like that. You can also come in and you can say, well, you know what I want? I want to have an, a setter guard clause here. And you can do it even though um, uh, we were using the syntax that doesn't actually have the brace blocks on it. And coders will realize, well, we got to add brace blocks and we'll do it. So it's um, That's good. Fr from that perspective, uh, uh, it's it's good and it's nice, right? In terms of of building that. So you can use, what's cool about this, just to reiterate, is you can still use the Visual Studio feature to generate to explicitly implement the interface or implement the interface, and then you can follow that with the Code Rush feature to immediately add backing store or to turn it into an auto implemented property. That's right. I mean, we pick up on any valid syntax and provide you what we believe to be the single most likely situations that you'll want to do, the scenarios that will help you most from any of those kick points. All right. So as you say, Visual Studio gives you some help. We'll give you some more to extend that to a, a natural conclusion. And that's it, guys. So thanks for watching and uh, we will see you next time. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.